My name is Patrick Cahill. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon and I work at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. One of the most common questions we get from families that are considering having a scoliosis fusion are, does it affect my child's ability to have her own children when she's older? Will it affect the pregnancy or the childbirth process? The answer is it shouldn't affect either one. The data that we've gathered show that women who had a scoliosis fusion as teenagers can have full-term babies and they can go through normal vaginal delivery with those babies at rates that are similar to their peers. One of the issues that does come up though and that we found with our data are that women who have had a scoliosis fusion seem to uh, get epidural or spinal anesthesia during their delivery at a rate lower than their peers. And we think that this is probably because of a lack of education of the obstetrician. A lot of obstetricians think that people that have had a spinal fusion are not candidates for epidurals and spinal injections because the instrumentation in the fusion gets in the way of where the injection should go. And this is true for other types of spinal fusions for, for conditions like degenerative problems and spondylolisthesis in the lower back. But with scoliosis surgery, there's usually enough room for them to be able to get a needle in to do an epidural or a spinal. So our advice is, is to talk early in your pregnancy with both your orthopedic spine surgeon and your obstetrician about your needs and concerns about having an epidural or a spinal during your delivery. Come up with a plan, which is part of any good advice surrounding a pregnancy and childbirth. And if that involves an epidural or a spinal, uh, be proactive and have your obstetrician work with their anesthesiologist to understand that this is what their expectation is and that it is feasible. One of the things I do with my patients as they age out of my practice and start to become adults and go off into the world is I encourage them to keep a copy of their x-rays with them. This will allow them to show that x-ray to their obstetrician and the anesthesiologist that will be involved with their childbirth and educate that practitioner about where the spinal fusion extends to. Uh, spinal fusions usually end at the lowest at the third or fourth lumbar vertebrae in the spine and I'll demonstrate this on this model. So this is the back of somebody's spine, and generally those fusions stop probably about this level right here. And the epidural injections and the spinal injections go in between the bones here and here. Neither of those places are usually covered by a spinal fusion and are accessible uh, should somebody need an epidural or a spinal injection. Uh, so this is an important part of the decision making and education that the patients themselves have to do for their obstetricians and their anesthesia providers during childbirth. And one of the other steps that I do in my practice is I've identified an obstetrician in my catchment area in Philadelphia who is familiar with taking care of women who have had a scoliosis fusion in their teenage years. And she uh, talks them through the process. She familiarizes herself with the x-rays that the patients provide her and uh, makes a plan such that they can get the anesthesia that they want during their childbirth. There's no reason that a woman who has had a fusion of her spine for scoliosis can't have a full-term pregnancy uh, with her rods and screws in place. Women who've had a scoliosis fusion in their teenage years should be able to have an epidural. And if you have an obstetrician that tells you you can't, uh, find another obstetrician, or even better, talk with your scoliosis surgeon so that they can educate their obstetrician. I'll demonstrate on the model here where that epidural injection can occur. Usually it occurs between the, the lowest lumbar vertebrae, the fifth lumbar vertebrae, and the sacrum right here, and this gap right here is where the needle goes. Um, alternatively, alternatively, it can go between the fourth and the fifth lumbar vertebrae. Both of these areas should remain open and untouched after a typical scoliosis fusion in adolescence. 99% of women that have had a spinal fusion for adolescent idiopathic scoliosis have their fusion end at a level above where these two areas are uh, available for an epidural and a spinal injection. Our study showed that women that have had a scoliosis fusion can have a normal spontaneous vaginal delivery. There don't seem to be any increased complication rates during pregnancy or with delivery in women that have had a fusion for scoliosis compared to the general population. Mm -hmm.